by way of a bit of an introduction, what we're going to do is I'm, I'm going to talk about two different areas, uh, two different ways that are linked um, on how I actually keep myself well. And apart from the lifestyle things that I do, uh, I have a mind, body, soul approach. So I eat well, you know, I'm a functional nutritionist. Um, I'm a Pilates teacher, so I not only do Pilates and yoga, but I also teach it. I walk every day because we've got dogs. I do a bit of Tai Chi. You know, I'm doing exercise every day. I do um, mindfulness exercises, meditations. You know, it really is a whole body approach. I use a microbiome um, balancing skincare range. That's one of the things I do for self-care. I make things like my own kombucha and kefir, and we'll talk about that as well. So, you know, I kind of live it, but I also like chocolate and I also like wine and gin. And so I'm no angel, but everything in moderation, basically. So I don't want you thinking, oh, you know, I could never, you know, live this kind of nun saint like life. I don't live that kind of life at all, but I have a kind of 80 20 rule. And so 80% of the time, I'm really careful about what I do and 20% of the time I just have a really good, um, a good, a good time with myself and anybody else that'll, that'll join in. Okay, so what we know at the moment is that the world is very different, isn't it? You know, we've just had the most amazing four months. We're very lucky. We live in the middle of nowhere here. We've got lots of space, a huge garden, and um, I've been really busy but we've also been really happy but I know that's not the same for everybody and at the moment you know we're in this position where we're probably all looking to recalibrate I think the whole world's doing that raise, it, raise your hand if you agree with me you know we've all been given the opportunity to really think about who will I be from this point onwards one of the scary things that's going on at the moment is that we've got this world this outer world that is putting a lot of pressure on us with very scary stories that are sent us into this place of shock and fear and grief. And there's a, a skill to actually um, stopping that outside world coming in. And that's where the mindfulness and meditation comes in, is being able to be self-aware and having tools and techniques that you can use so that you can protect and ground yourself. Now, I know that there are people on this call that are very sensitive. So perhaps you're an empath, maybe you're very intuitive, maybe you're an energy healer or worker, maybe you're, you know, on, on, on an awakening, a spiritual awakening path. And all of this will be much more heightened for you. But at the same time, you will also know that you will have ways of dealing with um, some of the energies that are going on. We all have a different... Uh, awareness a different level of consciousness we all have work at a different vibration at different and energy levels um, but we have also been given the opportunity to really think about what is it that we believe in going forward some of us have been very proactive during this time and others have taken a much more back step during this COVID sort of 14 weeks. And I don't know if whether you've experienced this, but June was a real period of really high vibration, which probably made you feel knackered. If you've been feeling tired and fatigued in June, just give me a little wave if that's you, um, that's because of the energies that are going on. But July is a very different energy. So we're coming out of this um, so now is the time to get ready for getting into action, even if you haven't felt like it up to the moment. And I truly believe that self-care is not a luxury at this time. This is an absolute necessity. So I really applaud you, all of you, for spending time and being with me this evening, because it means that you know, you're aware that this is a really important time for you. And particularly as women, we're a bit rubbish at it, aren't we? Yes, we are. <laughs> so you might have found over this time that, you know, with your world, you know, we need to go back and build it perhaps in a different way. And you're perhaps becoming a bit more sensitive about when you're in flow and when you're not. So do you have those days when you get up in the morning and everything just goes right? Do you have those days? 
you know, um, uh, the kids do what they're told and the, you know, you've got in the fridge what you want for breakfast and, uh, you know, you've got enough tea or coffee or whatever it is and you've got, um, a plan for the day which just goes really smoothly everybody's really nice to you you get lovely phone calls you might even get some new clients you know things like that there's just a wonderful flowy day to get days like that and to get other days when oh my god nothing goes right and energy is blocked and you don't seem to be able to get out of this kind of whirlpool <laughs> now at the moment what's happening because of what's going on is this pause that we've had means that we've always been in this, this world of duality where there's always dark and light. You know, if we don't have the dark, we can't appreciate the light, can we? So there has to be, if we were happy and radiant and wonderful and everything was flowing all day, um, we wouldn't be able to appreciate it in such the way. So life is just like that. We all, we all have rubbish days and we all have really good days. The trouble at the moment with all the fear, with COVID, with all the uncertainty that's going on, is that actually the dark bits are really dark. And you will perhaps have experienced there where you've, you're kind of rocking along at these basement level energies, really, really low energies, low vibrations. But it also means that when we are in the light vibration, things can be really happy and elated. So what we need to be able to do is allow this new energy in, but also accept the dark energies because that's when the healing occurs. Okay, so those dark energies are really important and it's really important that you don't become frightened by them because it's really easy to go into overwhelm and think, oh my God, you know, this is going to be my life from here. But actually, it's, it's a bit like... Um, have you heard the expression, the cold is the cure? So, you know, when you have a cold or say you have diarrhea, to, diarrhea and vomiting, you know, the temptation is, isn't it, to go and take something to stop, you know, throwing up and to stop having the runs. It's very natural. But actually being sick and, and having diarrhea is the cure because your body is saying, I don't want this stuff inside of me, so I'm going to get rid of it. And the same way that a cold is the same thing, you know, you're getting rid you know, all this mucus is you getting rid of the virus out of out of your system and this is really what is going on at the moment with these vibrations is that these low energies that we are in that's the cure that's where the healing takes part um, but there's things that you can do to help you through this period of change and that's really why i've been asked to come on and talk to you about it is because I'm sure that a lot of you are very aware of some of the things that I'm going to talk to you about this evening, probably most of them. The majority of women in particular know what we need to do and what we don't need to do. You know, I, it's not rocket science really, but sometimes, and most of the time, and I'm included, I just need a really good reminder and I need it putting in context as well. So I'm hoping to do that for you this evening. And one of the reasons I'm here is that I was asked specific questions about what I do nutritionally to, to keep my vibration high. So even when I'm having a low vibration basement day, I've got some foundation here um, to go at. I, I know that I'm doing the very best that I can so that I'm not going to dip into uh, a low that I can't get out of. So that it means that every type of self-care that you do, whether that's, you know, we've got Emma on here who is an acupuncturist, Noreen is a laughter yoga teacher, or whether you go to shiatsu, whether you have a Pilates session, a yoga session, you know, whatever it is, a relaxation, you go for some beauty therapy. The root of all of this is what you're putting in your mouth. And every therapist that I work with and talk talks to, and one of the the ladies that um, I talked to about this the other day, Amanda, who some of us know, who is um, uh, an intuit, she's a channeler, uh, she doesn't call herself that, uh, but we're doing an archangel course with her at the moment. And she knows, even though her vibration is really high, is that actually she still needs to look after herself and look after her nutrition specifically. So I'm gonna cover two things, two areas. One is a kind of heart health, approach so this is my daily routine and then i'm actually going to talk to you about your gut 
as well, if that's okay. First of all, what I want to be able to do to you is, to, is for you is to put in context why I do what I do and why you should listen to me. Because if you know me, that's okay. But I know that some of you don't know me. So who is this Jill Byron woman? You know, what does she know anyway? So my kind of story goes back to uh, November uh, 2012. It was a Friday morning, November the 1st. It was my father's, I don't know, 78th birthday something like that I'd just been on the phone with him and I'd gone to my local surgery and you'll find me in this surgery sitting in a kind of dark room um, at a desk with a little uh, woman she's about four foot eleven something like that with a, a blue nurse's uniform gray spiky hair and glasses on that she wore on around her neck on one of those little dangly things and she looked over the top of her glasses at me and she said Jill, this is terrible. I've never seen such terrible results for you. You know, I've known you for 15 years and your blood pressure's up, your cholesterol's up, you've definitely got an infection, you're going to have to have antibiotics for that. Um, your weight's gone up by about two stones since the last I saw you. What on earth is going on? I'm really worried about you. Are you okay? Well, I just burst into tears. And the reason I burst into tears was that she was the first person that had asked me, was I okay? for as long as I can remember. Oh, Dawn, I just feel dreadful. I'm not sleeping. Um, I can't concentrate. I just feel so miserable all the time. I'm really not coping. I'm worried about, you know, my daughter's gone to university. You know that Matthew was really ill in the summer and I've really had to deal with all of that. Lydia's really struggling to settle into university. I'm worried about my dad because he's miles away. Uh, and I don't know what to do about them, you know, and work's just dreadful, that awful woman hasn't got any better. To be honest, I, I don't think I've ever felt like this. And she said, well, I'm really worried about you and I'm gonna get you an appointment this afternoon because I think you should see the doctor. But before I do that, have you had any thoughts of harming yourself? So here I was sitting, thinking I was Mrs. Superwoman and somebody was asking me if I was suicidal. And I was just, has anybody ever done that to you? If somebody has asked you a question, you think, where did that come from? What do you mean? But actually she'd known me for so long that she had seen this decline in me. And when I went home that weekend and I looked back in hindsight, hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? I could see that over a period of about 18 months to two years, my health had slowly declined. And indeed I was by then pretty fat, sick and unhappy. So I don't know whether you've ever done this, but I took a poll and I wrote down all the good things in my life and all the bad things in my life. And all the bad things were around my job. Um, and so what I did on the Tuesday was I resigned from my job because I knew that that was the source of the major stress that I had. And <laughs> that was the kind of beginning of the next stage of my life. And what I need to tell you is that I was 51 at the time. And I'd, uh, at that point, started a new business. Um, I trained to be a Pilates teacher. And I also decided that I needed to do something about my health, but also the health of my son. Now I mentioned to you that he was really ill. In fact, my son, Matt, he nearly died in the summer of that year. So this is the day before he went into hospital for the third time in that summer. He'd come home from university his second year. Um, he had another sore throat. And I'd spent three or four weeks back and fro from the hospital, from the drop-in center, from the doctors. They kept giving him antibiotics. They didn't know what was wrong with him. Uh, and on this particular day, he'd stopped eating. He'd stopped drinking. He'd stopped talking to me. He was in so much pain that I was having to back back give him paracetamol and neurofen and anything else that they could give me and it was very scary and we got him into hospital and it took them a further two days to determine that he had something called epiglottitis which is inflammation of the little flap that sits at the top of the windpipe and it's really rare and the doctor said to me Mrs Barham you know we don't see this other than in young people and in old people, we weren't looking for it in a 15 and a half stone rugby playing fit young student. You know, it's really unusual. And I was so frightened by what had happened. And then I was given this diagnosis that I was depressed and did I want antidepressants? 
And I thought, no, I've got to do something about this. You see, my mother had died suddenly of a blood clot at 56 when I was only 28 years old and pregnant with my first child. And all I could see, maybe you'll understand this, was that if I didn't do something about my health, I might end up like her because all of her symptoms were exactly the same as mine, except she was suicidal. So I did resign from my job and this was me on Christmas day about five weeks later. Now I look dreadful in my view. I had inflammation in my face and I was overweight, but I had actually started singing around the house again. And I didn't realize that I'd stopped doing that until my, my children said, Oh mom, you know, you're coming back to us. You started singing. And in the January, I um, had some help from a friend of mine who is a nutritional therapist and my Pilates teacher. And she said, Jill, we've been really worried about you for some time, but um, I'm going to, you know, introduce you to this program, what I think is really going to help you and help Matthew. Um, and a lot of it was to do with gut health. And so on February the 24th, uh, which was my, my son's 21st birthday, this is what we looked like. So I call him Superman. He looks like Superman, doesn't he? <laughs> And what's lovely about this is that, you know, not only do we look good, but we actually felt really happy too. Um, and so one of the things that is really important that I'm going to talk to you about is not only about looking good, um, about physical wellness, but it's also about mood and emotional health too. And so you can understand that this is really, really important. Now, what happened after this, I, you know, people started to notice what I was doing. I'm, an, I'm a former nurse, I'm not a medical doctor. My title is uh, Dr. Jill Byron because I've been awarded an honorary doctorate in the last couple of years. But my life kind of just took off on this new weird pathway where I started being asked to give talks and uh, appear on radio shows. And then I wrote my first book, The Yellow One Here, The Heart of a Woman. I started writing magazine articles. Um, this is me on the BAFTA stage uh, launching my book actually. Um, and then I was given the opportunity to run a TV show for a while. And then I have a new podcast, an old podcast called The Life You Deserve, and a new podcast coming out with Radiant Menopause. And um, been given lots of awards and was very fortunate to be, um, you know, given an honorary doctorate. Now, I'm not telling you that to say, oh, look at me, aren't I clever? No, this is all about being in that space of that high vibration when I was in a low vibration, when I was allowing other people to determine what my life was going to be um, and to, you know, trying to fulfill other people's uh, expectations of me, everything was going downhill and my health really, really suffered. When I started to work in an area that was, I was passionate about and that was rewarding, this is when my vibration was heightened and I began to feel happier. And when you feel happier, I don't know whether this happens to you, uh, but the happier I've got, the more joyful I've got. And in the last two or three, two years, I've been working much more on a spiritual level, which means that the people that are coming towards me and I'm gravitating to are like me. They want to live this kind of joyous life too. And you are all here because you want the same thing. You're here on this call because you were drawn for whatever reason into this circle. And it may be um, because of somebody else, but actually it's to do with the collective people that are on this call tonight. The energy of us is what has brought you into this room. I truly believe that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through kind of the, the, the basics of what I believe from a functional nutrition uh, point of view. So although I look holistically, you know, I'm really just going to focus on the nutrition part of it tonight because I know, you know, a lot of you are really interested in that. So for me, it's about creating this balance and flow, the yin and yang, the duality, the dark and the light. And it says, you know, if you look at the definition of well-being, it's an enjoying a contented state of good health, happiness and prosperity. And, and this kind of sums up what it is for me. It's, if it's living with a sense of purpose, making a contribution with your skills and talents, being happy and fulfilled, comfortable with expressing your emotions, standing up for what you believe in and having the ability to bring out the best in others. And as a menopausal woman or now as a postmenopausal woman, you know, I've I've, I'm owning this space now, along with um, 
uh, other people as well, and one of those is Emma on here, the menopausal godmother, because we're really keen to help women over 40 to also take control and empower them to have a life, a midlife, enjoy their wisdom years and make the most of the second stage of their life. And in order to do that, I need to be able to do that myself as well. Now in my book, this is one of my favorite quotes. So Stephen Horn is the past president of the American Herbalist Society. I started researching herbs and nutraceuticals as opposed to pharmaceuticals. Started really looking at the ways to use natural solutions. I, I went to a natural path when I was 19. Um, I'm 59, by the way, now. Uh, so that's 40 years ago. And nobody really ever did, you know, vitamins and minerals and naturopathic stuff in, in those days. But I was training to be a singer at the time and I had some uh, vocal problems. And my singing teacher in London said, you need to go to a naturopath. She was savvy enough to know that taking pills was not a really good idea. And so I really believe my, new, my philosophy, which is very different to when I trained after that to be a nurse, is that we need to build health rather than uh, treat symptoms. So we need to optimize health, minimize disease, and that's where we get to maximum or elite health, maximizing, maximizing um, wellness, essentially. And so the whole approach that I have is to do with that. And a big part of it, as I say, is nutritionally. And you might have heard this expression, you are what you eat. So we know that we are a nation that is um, underfed, but uh, overfed, but undernourished. So the food that we have got access to, even if you are on here, and I know a lot of you are, and you have a good diet, or what you perceive to be a good diet, the quality of your food is affected. And a lot of it has got hidden stuff in it that maybe even you don't realize that it's affecting uh, the way that your metabolism works. Um, and you'll know some of them, you know, things like um, additives, pesticides, and all the rest of it. Unfortunately, the majority of the world, eat, you know, 80 to 90% of people rely on processed foods uh, that you'll be familiar with here. Um, and the way that we eat now is very different to our ancestors. And, you know, we talk about organic food, but actually post-war, our relatives just called it food. And we were a really healthy nation, un unwittingly, we were a really healthy nature, nation post-war because we were doing the things that we talk about now, which is eating uh, small amounts of cheese, butter, those kind of good fats and eggs, uh, having uh, meat occasionally in your diet. Um, not getting access to any sugar because they couldn't during the war, you know, with rationing, growing their own vegetables and fruits. So their diet actually is the clean eating diet that I'm going to be teaching about this evening. And the trouble is that the refined foods that we are being exposed to, even if we go to something like pret a manger, but even that pret salad, if you look on the back of the ingredients, you know, you just don't have the salad ingredients. You have all sorts of hidden ingredients in there as well. Uh, to preserve it and something like a I don't know a bag salad is washed in a 12% chlorine solution to be honest with you it's obvious when you think about it because if you grow a lettuce and bring it into the house you'll have it for that day but it's not going to last any more than one day is it so why is the salad that you're buying off the supermarket shelf lasting for a further few days after it's been on the shelf maybe for a while we know that overcooking destroys nutrients we also know that modern day farming techniques also reduce uh, the minerals. Now we don't die of a vitamin deficiency, but we will die of a mineral deficiency. And so, you know, really um, getting enough minerals, sufficient minerals in your diet is really important. And of course, vitamin D3, which is actually a hormone, is really important. Uh, magnesium is one of the most important ones that is often the most depleted in our foods. And I take a magnesium supplement every day without fail. Um, so what we know is that, you know, the quality of food is just not good enough. Our food is harvested too early. We're eating it out of season. So a green banana is fine, but actually to get the nutrients in this banana, it needs to ripen on the tree, not in a banana box that has traveled thousands of miles and been put on a shelf in your local supermarket. Cold storage is used because our food now looks beautiful, 
but actually every day that it is stored, it loses its nutrition. So you might think, well, that apple looks wonderful, but if it's been in cold storage for six months and been on the shelf for four days, uh, the likelihood it's got very little taste to it. And I give you a really good example at the moment, strawberries are around, aren't they? It reminds me of um, Wimbledon. And strawberries taste delicious at this time of year, don't they? Well, that's because they're in season and they are jam packed full of vitamin C. And it's vitamin C that gives that strawberry that taste. So if you're eating a strawberry in January and February and it doesn't taste of anything, guess what? It doesn't have the vitamin C content. We also know that there is depletion from drugs. So if you take any, any drugs, so things like aspirin, paracetamol, the one that's really important here is understanding antidepressants. When I do talks to menopausal women, Half the women, no, they don't admit to it to start with, but by the end of the talk, half the women in that room will have been diagnosed with depression and given antidepressants. Uh, the majority of the time, it's because they are actually withdrawing from estrogen and depression is part of the symptoms of the menopause. Doctors are not aware of this. They're not really trained in, in, in the menopause. This, this is what my podcast is about, by the way. The thing about antidepressants is that they deplete B vitamins. But B vitamins are really important for brain health. So there's this kind of catch-22 going on. Um, antibiotics are really important, and you're going to know why when we get on to uh, talking about the gut. We're exposed to pollution every day, whether that's you know, somebody else's smoke, environmental pollution, uh, antioxidants, um, and fibre will protect you from that. We're talk, going to talk about that. And um, we are exposed to this free radical damage all the time. And these free radical accelerators, these are some of them. So uh, sunbeds, um, sun, uh, you know, sun itself, x-rays. A lot of people, you know, a bit obsessed with having x-rays. Every time they do it, they're exposing themselves to these free radicals. Uh, environmental pollution, barbecuing your food, unfortunately. That's a kind of free radical accelerator. So this is why when we talk about a really healthy diet is you'll hear nutritionists talking about antioxidants because antioxidants actually uh, stop this free radical damage. Now we have cancer in our body all the time. All of our cells are constantly mutating and produ producing cancer cells. But if we are eating a healthy diet, um, even if we are stressed, we have to up the amount of antioxidants we have, then we can counteract the effect of these antioxidants. I hope that makes sense to you. So things like doing the wrong sort of exercise, actually, or doing really hard, aggressive exercise produces free radicals, which is why any PT worth their salt will be giving their um, clients extra information on the necessity for taking extra antioxidants to help their muscles and system recover so that they counteract the free radical damage. So this is what it looks like. This is a rusty nail. So basically this is oxidization of a nail. So you all are familiar with this, it goes brown and rusty. And then you have an apple. So you halve an apple and you leave it out on the side and it oxidizes, it, it goes brown. But if you paint it with lemon juice, which is the one on the right, that's an antioxidant and it stops the oxidization. And free radical damage is what makes us old. It's what gives us wrinkles, it, what shrinks our hands. It's what um, makes our internal um, organs old. So whatever's happening on the outside is also happening on the inside. Free radical damage you cannot stop, but you can actually slow down the process and antioxidants are the key to that. The trouble with uh, free radical damage is that it's hidden. My brother-in-law, sadly, my, my husband's elder brother, um, came skiing with us in February. And about six weeks ago, he was diagnosed with bladder cancer and he was given three months to live. And he actually died two weeks ago. He lasted for seven weeks. Um, and by the time he died, the bladder cancer had gone into his bones, his lungs and his lymph nodes. And this is what happens with cancer. It will sit dormant and then all of a sudden there's this domino effect and we can be ignorant to it and we can just ignore what's going on or we can actually take this positive action and prevent it so the big thing that i want to talk to you about is what i do to protect myself from that happening apart from the lifestyle changes of managing my stress so part of the podcast will be a series called stress in the midlife woman 
we also need to think about our diet, what we're putting in our mouth, and also about supplementing our diet. So if you type supplements into Google, you get 171 million results. <laughs> That's hilarious. So how on earth do you tell? I don't know if you're like me, but you know, I used to be a real Dr. Google and I used to come home, you know, if I got anything wrong with me, I'd, I, you know, I'd look on Dr. Google and uh, I'd definitely be suff suffering with some awful disease within about 10 minutes. And it's the same for a lot of people. They'll go on and look for their supplementation online as well. And, you know, it, it sounds good, doesn't it? There's lots of people selling loads of stuff or, you know, you go into Boots or on the high street, um, you know, into those shops or even in your supermarket and you think that you're buying this wonderful thing, a bit like when you book a holiday and you think you're buying this, when actually when you get there, it looks more like that. So your expectations are high, but really what's happening is that you're being sold, uh, I can't remember the expression, sold a mark or something. And this is because supplements are not regulated. 85% of them are white label, which means that big manufacturers make them and they, other people just put their labels over the top of them. They will do things like not bothering to put the right plant part in them. Um, they will be adulterated with other things. They'll be synthetically made rather than from food. They will have additives in them, contamination. So maybe there's a root that's being used and they won't clean the roots off. So you'll get the soil and the bits of stone are ground up in your in your, um, your product, which makes it heavier and bulks it out. Bulking agency, pesticides, heavy metals are found in a lot of these supplements. And the worst, you know, the most expensive supplement is the one that doesn't work. In the same way that you would go and get advice about making a will, I would recommend that you find somebody to give you advice about what supplements to take. So I'm gonna to talk to you now about the two um, particular things, two systems that I use. This is Pam, she is on the call. And at the end of this, I'm going to invite Pam on to share her story with you. And also Jill is going to come on. Jill Tatlock is going to come on as well. So don't go away because they've got some extraordinary uh, tales to tell. So this is system number one. This is a nat the natural solutions, everyday thing that I do, apart from taking magnesium and omegas. I haven't got time to talk to you about those, but they're really important. This, these are the solutions that I take and Pam takes actually um, every day. Mystify is the antioxidant that I take. It's like a coolie. It is delicious. You have to hide it from the rest of the family. Because we have a variety of free radicals, we also need a variety of antioxidants. I'm afraid it's not good enough just to go and buy blueberries and think that that's okay. This one has nine different antioxidants in it. Acai berries are one of them. So just one little top, like in a top glass, I have that every day and it gives me the antioxidant quality benefit of three and a half kilograms of fruit. Now, if I was to eat three and a half kilograms of berries even, it would be so full of sugar, I would have difficulty sitting in this chair. So this is a way that I can ensure that I am getting sufficient antioxidants every day. The other thing I do, the other solution, is I drink this Phyto Life Stuff, this liquid chlorophyll, which is spearmint flavored. I just take a teaspoon in my water. I drink it pretty much all day. This bottle lasts me about three months. And this is wonderful because we're talking particularly about cancer and inflammation. Cancer cannot survive in an alkaline situation. You may have heard of people beating cancer because they've changed their diet. They go onto a plant-based diet. And this is because they are largely alkalizing their diet and they're cutting out sugar. sugar. Sugar is acidic and cancer loves sugar. In fact, the way that they test for cancer is to inject it with sugar. And that's the way that it reacts. That's the way that they can tell. So the more you can um, alkalize your body, the better. Again, I've got information on that. But this is the big one, and I know that specifically some of you are here to know about this particular thing. So I am fascinated by the heart. Uh, I did a series of radio shows, and I was called the Miracle Molecule Host. Uh, this is what I talked about when I was on the BAFTA stage. My book, The Heart of a Woman, um, is a lot to do with heart health. And this is why. As we age, our arteries get furred up. So in our 20s, they're lovely and open and flexible um, and they have no fairing. And then in our 30s, they you know, start getting thick. Then they build inflammation and plaque. 
calcium comes into the picture, they develop stiff walls and ultimate, ultimately what happens is that they get totally blocked in places. This inflammation here will break off, form a clot, and if that clot travels to your brain, you will have a stroke. If it travels to your heart, you will have a heart attack. And if it travels to your lungs, like it did with my mother, you will have a pulmonary embolus. You know, there was no chance for her. She died and there was absolutely no way. Only seven out of 10 people will survive their first heart attack. And what's really important that you understand is that postmenopausally, up to the age of about 51 or whenever the last day of your period is, which is the actual menopause, you are protected by estrogen to a greater degree. So the risk for you is slightly lower of heart attacks than it is for men. After menopause, unless you are taking estrogen, uh, a low dose micronized estrogen, your risk is higher. And it's not talked about Heart attacks are thought, uh, thought to be more to do with men than for women, but actually more women die of heart attacks or get heart attacks than men do. Top picture is lovely up to about the age of 23, you know, um, you've got this substance called nitric oxide, which acts as a signaling molecule that vasodilates and opens up your arteries. This was discovered in 1998 by three pharmacognologists who were given the Nobel Prize for discovering this. This is big stuff. You know, this is like the discovery of penicillin and x-rays. And basically, nitric oxide, as it says, affects every bit of the body. Because if you can imagine, if you've got a car and the tubes in the car and everything is blocked up, the car doesn't go. And it's the same as, as your body. The cardiovascular system, if it's all open and flexible and it doesn't have this buildup, um, then it's, it operates healthily. But as we get older, all of this stuff gets in the way. So brain, lungs, kiver, genitals. Genitals in here because nitric oxide is the effect that Viagra has. It is a vasodilator, so it helps blood get to the end of things. Are you with me, ladies? Yes. So this is what Viagra does. It opens up the arteries, gets blood to the end, and it gets to your genitals as well, ladies. It's really important because if you've not got good blood flow, it will not be getting to your vulva or your vagina or your clitoris. Proarginine, which I'm going to introduce you to, contains semi-essential amino acids, L-arginine and L-citrulline, that promote or produce this effect, this nitric oxide effect. Uh, L-citrulline, for example, that's all from food. Uh, L-citrulline, I know, comes from the pith of watermelons and L-arginine comes from the root of something and I always forget it. But what else happens in this particular formulation, which is a little sachet that you put in water, it also contains vitamin C. We talked about the importance of vitamin C. It contains vitamin D, we've already talked about that. It contains B vitamins. We know that for brain health, B vitamins are important. K2 is a blood thinner and it is sweetened with stevia, which means that it's suitable for diabetics. And actually there's a whole presentation that I do which talks about proarginine as part of a protocol to reverse or to counteract the complications of diabetes, type one and type two. Because what we can do is heal um, the optic nerve. And I have a great story, which I don't have time to tell you about now, with somebody that Pam knows that came onto my retreat last year, who was blind in one eye. And by the end of the weekend, she was seeing shapes for the first time in three years, something like that. Um, L-arginine is this magical, the miracle molecule, basically. So it does so many things. But what you need to know about it, this particular company that I choose to work with, they were the first ones to ever encapsulate herbs 46 years ago, something like that. They have the highest quality, purity, potency. They are, I've actually been to their manufacturing plant in, um, in Utah. They are owned by a company called Nature Sunshine Products. And this is um, the, the actual company themselves is called Synergy Worldwide. And this product alone has got a patent pending on it. And in America, doctors are allowed to prescribe nutraceuticals. They're allowed to prescribe vitamins and minerals. Here, nice regulations are that they just about get away with D3 and calcium, but it's not a particularly good formulation of it. 
Um, but in America, this physician's desk reference here, the PDR, contains all the pharmaceuticals, but also the nutraceuticals. So these are the, the things that are from food. And this L-arginine supplement is the only one that features, it's the most superior one. You know, it's really important to me that for my brand and my, my body and for anybody else that I use the best. So here's how it works. It's a signaling molecule. Now I'd like to introduce you to this lady here. So she came to me, ah, oh, so this is 20, uh, 2016. I've chosen her because she's, you know, you don't know her. She came to me and she was 65 at the time. So this is a test that I do. And Pam has had this test. It's called uh, an arterial stiffness test to test whether or not your arteries are lovely and flexible or whether they're stiff and firm. This lady uh, was a Pilates client of mine. She was 65, she was very slim. She always wore red lipstick. She was very active. She wore, played tennis and she did a lot of walking. She was on a very low dose antidepressant. That was the only thing that she took. And she came to me because she was a bit worried because her doctor had said to her, I'm, I'm worried about your blood pressure. I think we might have to put you on blood pressure tablets. So this machine that I use, which looks like a blood pressure cuff, uh, I did three tests on her this particular morning on the, what is it, the 11th of January, 2016. And I was completely horrified and really frightened because her arterial stiffness was at the top of the scale. Her blood pressure was 200 over 100. A normal blood pressure is 120 over 80. And I thought, my God, this woman is going to go outside my door collapse in a heap and everybody's going to go, oh, that's amazing. I never would have thought Angela would have been poorly because from the outside, she looked perfectly fit and healthy. But there is also another tale to this. She is an identical twin. And she had spent more time at Great Ormond Street Hospital than you and I could shake a stick at because she was part of the twin survey. So they had done every test possible, probably every year or two, including heart tests, and they had not picked up the arterial stiffness. So when she came to me on that day, she, her actual age was 65, which is the red line, but her biological age was 79. So she was 14 years older biologically. Now that wasn't gonna get any better because once your arteries fur up and stiff, uh, there's nowhere for it to go. It's just a kind of compounding problem. So we talked about proarginine. And I put her on two sachets a day. She was taking Amigas as well. At the time, she didn't take the other two. And she came back to me, and you'll see on the 4th of April, 2016, her biological age had dropped from 79 to 60 or 61. And this is the effect of this collation program uh, where it actually just gradually frees up and reduces this arteriosclerosis uh, and the arterial the atherosclerosis um, to help the arteries become more flexible it's food first by the way and supplements second uh, but actually um, uh, you know as you already know uh, i'm afraid you cannot reverse your biological age without adding extra things in your food is not going to do this so we know that everybody has the opportunity now for elite health. If I could get everybody on the V3 system, we'd have a much healthier nation. I'm hoping that more and more people are going to reevaluate where their health is following COVID. I've certainly had the experience that more people were worried about their health than they were about their finances, particularly initially, which is a real sea change, isn't it? And one that we you know we're delighted to see. So some of us are in poor health, some of us have um, optimum health. Few people have real optimum metabolic health because we are constantly being bombarded with the lifestyles that we have in the 21st century. So although this is my daily routine, part two of what I do is I reset every four to six months to regain this balance and flow. Uh, so this is the gut health part of it. We're nearly there. Thanks for sticking with me because we're going to talk to Pam in a minute. We're only 10% human, basically. We thought that epigenetics, we thought that we were, you know, more to do with how we were made. But actually, it's all of it, 90% of it is to do with our gut microbiome, which are all these trillions of bacteria, fungi, bacteria that are in us and on us. And what's really important is that in our 21st century lives, 
this balance gets out of whack, particularly with stress, particularly with fear, which is what we've been really suffering with, particularly with um, drugs and you know, more importantly with a re any dose of antibiotics, just one dose, with poor food, uh, with f little sleep. You know, all of this influences our microbiome. This is Matt. Now, when I was taking him to hospital, every time I went in, I would say to the people and to the, the doctors, my son was diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome at 12. Do you think this has got anything to do with the fact that he's so poorly? At no point did anybody take any notice of me. Because you see, we were in the ear, nose and throat department. <laughs> And they were only looking at him from there down. And that was one of the reasons that I left the NHS, actually, is because I really found it very difficult uh, not to have anything other than a holistic approach. But the true story about my son is that I had glandular fever when I conceived him. I'd had it for quite a while and I thought I was better. And I was told not to get pregnant again, but I ignored it because I'm a superwoman, remember? And I decided that it was really important that I had my children at certain, you know, at certain gaps. I, had, I didn't have a great pregnancy. He was two and a half weeks early. He was nine pounds, four ounces, a big baby. He was born by cesarean section, as all mine are, which means that his gut microbiome uh, was poor. So being born vaginally is much better for your gut microbiome. And he was born as a, almost a failure to thrive baby. So he was huge. And then within five months, he was on the third centile. He had a raised fontanelle. We thought maybe he had hydrocephalus, but he actually had a virus. And I think that was the Epstein-Barr virus, which is the virus that I had that I'd passed into his system. Matt never had a normal nappy. He only ever passed undigested food. He never had a solid stool in the whole time that I did his nappies, and even as a young boy. But more importantly, he used to suffer with really poor moods. And we know that the happy hormones like serotonin, melatonin, tryptophan, all those things are made in the gut. And because he had such poor gut function, he actually was quite a depressed boy at times. And still now, if he doesn't look after his diet, he goes into these low moods because the gut brain connection is huge. You might have heard of this before, but it's not only gut brain. What the increasing science in the last five years, we know now that your immune system, and this is why COVID is so important. We are very aware that the people that have died of the COVID-19 disease are people who have low immunity. They are the old or the sick or the vulnerable. People who are getting COVID, unless they are getting a, a viral load, and I haven't got time to explain that to you, uh, you know, on the whole, those people, although they've got it, will survive. But it is the vulnerable because if you have poor gut function, say you've got somebody who's elderly, they might have an underlying chronic disease. They're almost certainly taking medications. We now know how that affects it. They're probably not getting enough exercise, no diet. All of this affects the gut microbiome. Immunity is low. Your glandular system is low. It affects the thyroid. Uh, you'll get joint pains if your, stomach, if your gut's not working well. Your lungs will be affected and how you breathe. Your uh, brain, so there's an awful lot of connection because of gut brain. Uh, there's a real link to Alzheimer's and dementia now with poor gut health. Your cardiovascular system is affected if your gut's not working properly. Your skin is your window of your gut. So I help people with uh, acne and psoriasis and eczema they come to me and i don't give them creams to put on their skin i sort their gut out you know the quality of your skin and your nails and your hair it's all related uh, your hormone balancing and this is what we do for a lot of menopausal women often when they go on to our gut cleansing program uh, their hormone symptoms either diminish or go away completely it, you've got to have a good gut microbiome to have balanced blood sugar so your cravings will also go away and also there's a massive piece here about weight control. This, uh, before I go on and talk to Pam, this is a, a, one of the studies that were done with twins and there've been quite a lot of them done and with mice as well, that you've got twins, a bit like Angela and her sister. Now I'm guessing that Angela's sister's butt gut microbiome was probably healthier than hers because you can even transport the gut microbiome of a healthy twin and put it in a unhealthy twin or vice versa and their bodies will change. 
you do this with mice so a fat mice will become skinny a skinny mice will become fat um, it will go back to normal but you know these are all the studies that have been done and this shows you if you've got this fat storing body it affects the posture the thyroid the digestive system the liver gets overloaded um, the adrenal glands are stressed out um, and the you know the the metabolic rate goes down as well so this is the solution this is the kind of you know you could call it a detox if you want it isn't really it's a microbiome reset program and what we're doing is we're repopulating the gut and it's not just about taking probiotics and prebiotics i'm going to explain to you a little bit what it's about but first of all what i want to do is i want to bring pam in i met jill who i'm now very privileged to call a very good friend and um we met at a, a, a women's conference that was kind of a mix of a business conference for women with well-being as a you know a, a large theme of it and jill was one of the presenters there and was talking about a retreat that she was running um so i just thought i'm gonna book on that and um we got talking at the end of the day and jill gave me a book uh, the, the yellow book that you may have seen, Heart Matters. So I started reading that and I was about halfway through it and I thought I've got to go and meet with Jill and talk to her because I felt so ill. And when I was reading the book, I thought I had a, I'd come out of a situation, incredibly stressful job, um, completely burned out. I thought it was all stress. I had a lot of anxiety. I was getting panic attacks. Um, so I was having some hypnotherapy, some of you know Amanda, so I was having hypnotherapy with uh, Amanda and then kind of started to address the rest of my health. So I read this book halfway through and there was a page of symptoms of menopause. So I'm 45 now. Um, so then I was, I was nearly 44, so like 18 months ago. And I realised I had nearly every single symptom of the menopause, not knowing it, because I didn't really know a lot about it. I didn't think I was uh, in the menopause, but I'm perimenopausal. So obviously I learned a lot about that and realised a lot of the symptoms that I was having were actually as a result of my hormones. So I met with Jill and we kind of did a bit of a health check. I was really worried, I have high blood pressure. I was really worried about uh, the arterial stiffness. So we measured that. Unfortunately, I scored, scored low, you know, quite low. Um, so I did the 21 day reset that um, Jill does and Jill Tatlock's just done that, just finished yesterday. So I've done, I've done it a few times now and I've kind of always been a, you know, 20 years on Slimming World you know, just gradually getting fatter and fatter every year, um, uh, as, as we do. Um, and so I, I, I was just trying to find the testimonial that I'd done all the symptoms, because you forget, because once you've kind of got rid of them, you forget that you had them, really. Um, and one thing that I had was um, overheating at night, and I didn't think that was hormonal. I thought it was because I was overweight. I would be up to the toilet several times in the night and my husband, my ex-husband, he was laid there with a, a jumper on and a quilt on and I had no covers on me. Um, and within the first week of being on the programme, that stopped and I've not had it since. So that just completely stopped. Um, my skin improved. Um, I had problems with my knee. Um, I'd had cartilage done. I had a lot of pain in my leg. All of that went, um, anxiety went, my bloating went, I thought the whites of my eyes were whiter. Uh, my, I've got nail varnish on, but my nails are strong, you know, dull flake, glossy. Um, bladder improved, not having to get up in the night for the toilet. Um, and and I hadn't done it for the weight loss. I knew it would be a byproduct, but I lost 16 and a half pounds in 21 days on the program. Now I do have a lot, a lot to lose. I was overweight. Um, but um, ultimately it was quite life changing. And we have a bit of a joke, some of you know me, but um, I kind of said I lost 16 and a half pounds and also another 13 stone because I then spoiled my husband. So <laughs> we had a bit of a laugh about that, but it was, <laughs> Um, 
but it was it literally has been quite life changing for me and um i've kind of broken that cycle of the diet clubs and just kind of unlearned everything that i've learned in the last 20 odd years and i thought i knew a lot about nutrition and food and i learned so much more um and you know i wasn't a great believer in supplements because it had always been instilled in me that you know if you eat healthily you get everything you need from the food but then when you start thinking about how the soil's depleted and you know i think it was um so in one of the video tutorials she said you know 50 years ago to 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 get the nutrition from a bowl of spinach that you eat now uh, to 50 years ago you'd have to eat 50 bowls of it to get the same amount of nutrients out of that than you did 50 years ago so that's how the quality of the food has diminished um so i was kind i, I kind of understood then the need for supplements and um you know i think the difference has been massive i don't know if you saw on my post but my before and after pictures and you know it's it's definitely made a huge difference to me and um you know i do it you know probably about three times a year um as a reset and you know sometimes i don't do it really strictly but i just really cut back on on some of the things that we, we look to cut out in the cleanse but um yeah definitely uh been educational and changed things for me and you're amazing pam because you really um you know you you didn't have the the first time you did it you know you had a husband that wanted to feed you all the time you know his uh his takeaway curries and things and it's not easy to do you know when you're in a family particularly as a mum. and i know that some people really struggle with this um, but it, I know that it's been life changing for you and I feel so privileged and grateful that I've been even just a small part of that. Um, and I'm, you know, I, I love you and I, I'm really pleased that your life is, you know, completely different to when I met you, you know, just two years ago, whatever it was, it's just incredible what's happened. So I will explain um, the programme in a minute, but I, before I do that, because I want Jill to come on, if you would, Jill. I've just um, finished the 21 day cleanse. It was Pamu. I kind of saw and she looked amazing and told me all about it and then I saw some of your posts on Facebook Jill that mentioned like going dizzy, headaches and achy ankles in the morning, bloated and I thought god I can't say yes to all of those things um, so I thought well I'm in lockdown, I'm not doing a great deal, I'm not going out, I'm not eating meals out, I'm not going out partying with friends, I'll do the 21 day cleanse and it's been amazing. It's after the first three days are out of the way, I'd say, because you do feel pretty rough for I did the first say three days. But then after that, it's just it's just amazing. My nails are better, my skin, I'm sleeping well, I'm not aching. I've lost six centimetres from around my waist. Um just everything. I just feel so much better. I feel happier. How old are you, Jill? Um, I'm 47 in August. I like the way she had to think about that. I <laughs> Stop counting at 21. <laughs> <laughs> and what Jill's been great at is that she's been, you know, not everybody gets as involved, but I'm going to tell you how this works. And Jill's been absolutely fabulous because she's, you know, she doesn't just dip her feet in. She's <laughs> bored of me sending pictures. <laughs> No, not at all. Thank you so much for sharing. Helena's is actually doing it at the moment, aren't you? Oh, come on, Helena. How how many days are you in? I'm from Monday. I started on Monday, but for me, I uh, because I eat quite healthy, so it's not that much change for me. But change because of, I'm not having coffee, so I felt a little bit dizzy, a little bit weak, a few days. But yeah, it feels very good, and I also messed up one day. Uh, so I actually started to take all the other supplements from today, not from yesterday. Okay. <laughs> so I had one more, <laughs> one day longer preparation <laughs> for all this, um, okay. for all the goodness. Yeah. But yeah, I feel great. Uh, I felt, I felt a little bit weaker maybe a few days, but yeah. Well, it's a bit like that, that duality thing, you know, you have to go to the dark to see the light basically. And when you start it, that's what happens. But this is a program, not just products. 
you know, if you go and do a cleanse and you buy it from Boots, or whatever, you've just got a load of products and you don't really know what you're doing. Um, and they are, they tend to be colonic cleansers. This is a microbiome reset. It's the only one that I know that's on the market. Uh, a lot of people talk about the microbiome. Thousands of scientists and pharmacognosists and nutraceutical people talk about it, but I don't know any other company that's actually developed a system that has been clinically tried on humans that is not only products, but it is a program as well. So this is, yes, detoxifying, but it's cleansing your detoxifying digestive tract as we get older we get a leaky gut i don't have time to tell you about that today but we get a leaky gut that increases our likelihood to inflammation and to food sensitivities this is the one that balances your microbiome and so helena for the first week would have been on the miracle molecule pro arginine that's part of it because when you take it in this way it's also a detoxifier as well Alongside that, you take Body Prime, which is a magnesium supplement with prune and apple pectin in. This is what it does on the tin. It primes the body for the next stage. You add in then the pro and prebiotics, a pea protein shake, which is absolutely it's vanilla and it's delicious and it dissolves really quickly. Um, some people use this as an extra because remember, this is about you eating clean and well, not about you necessarily losing weight. Some people replace a meal though with Biome Shake. And the magic product, the clinically trialed one, the patent pendant one, is the one on the left-hand side, which is this green uh, biome DT, which is a broccoli base. This has got the stuff that's magic in it, the inulin, prebiotics, all sorts of other things. This is week two. Week three, you then finish everything up. Um, and then the idea is from there, you then go on to the V3 system. So this is what you do for three weeks go into the v3 system and then six months later or whoever what it is you come back and you do another three weeks of this i hope that makes sense and alongside all of that you get fact sheets talking about clean eating so helena is very okay with it but a lot of us get you know into bad habits so um sue who runs the program um she talks about cutting out the crap caffeine refined sugar alcohol and processed foods people get better results if they cut out dairy and wheat as well. Alongside this, you get Sue's videos. I've got loads of eBooks and other resources videos. You get a 35 page recipe book of clean eating recipes, sample menus, shopping lists. So even if you are not au okay fait with cooking, it's all there for you. And then you go into, once you've purchased this uh, whole pack, you go into this private Facebook group, which is where Jill is, uh, and Pam's in there and Helena's in there and Anne's in there um, and I think their testament to you is that there's wonderful because there's huge support people are posting their wonderful foods and Jill was brilliant at this every day without fail she posts breakfast lunch and dinner with all this fabulous food there are people in there that are nutritionists therapists like me so if you've got a question there's always somebody in there going oh yeah I suggest this and this is where this inspiration comes from so I have set this up for you so that you can get this at cost price. So I've taken off uh, the extra for, you know, the admin and stuff and putting you into the Facebook group. So you're literally just paying for the products here, which is £205 and 40p. I think there's a little bit added on for uh, postage as well. And then also there's the V3 system. So this is the cost price uh, for the V3 system, which is £109. Uh, and this is the basic standard dose, so you would get all of those three products. If you had high blood pressure, if you wanted to reverse your biological age, you would need two boxes of the Proarginine uh, because this is just a maintenance dose. Uh, but this is a really good place to start. And what's really important that you understand about this is that, you know, £109, for example, if you break that down, it's such a small amount. £25 a week, you know, you'd easily spend uh, a five or a day on, you know, ordinarily, if we're out and about on your picking up your lunch on your Costa coffee or whatever it is. And it's a, a really important uh, thing to be able to invest in your health. As I said, you know, your, um, this, your health is not a luxury at the moment. So these things are available for now at this discounted price. They are only going to be up for a short amount of time. The website that you need to visit for this is www.
drjillbarham.com uh, and you can also go to www.radiantmenopause.com because that's where some of the articles are and where further episodes of this podcast uh, will be loaded. So I will see you the next time.